quick caveat. In Britain, we already do have proportional representation in certain regards. So for instance, you know, the London mayor is picked this way. And, you know, even the Conservative Party leadership, yeah, they end up being you know, elected this way in a very similar way to what you have with AV. So basically with AV, if you don't end up getting a majority of the votes, if you don't get like the 50% threshold, then what ends up happening is that in a series of kind of like runoffs, yeah, so you vote for your favourite candidates based on a kind of like ranking system, right? And basically what ends up happening is that if candidates don't end up reaching the 50% mark, then the least popular person gets eliminated and you keep on going until you end up with 50%. So if it's good enough for the Conservative Party leadership, why should it not be like that for the rest of the country? And actually, when we were still part of the EU, we did have elections that were nationwide that were uh, picked by proportional representation. And most notably of all was the 2014 uh, European uh, Parliament elections. So within that election, UKIP, which, you know, in Westminster at that time had zero uh, seats and in total, like the most they ever had was two seats, right? They end up winning uh, that uh, election and this put a lot of pressure on the Conservative Party, which had eventually led to them putting in their manifesto uh, that there was going to be a vote on uh, whether Britain would leave the EU and stuff. But, but we'll get on to that in a little bit. But that election, as we can see on the map here, it was a completely different thing from what it would normally be, you know, because when a uh, first past the post system, politics ends up being very tribal. There's people who are like Labour supporters who will not vote for Conservatives, even if they align more with them. And there's people who are Conservatives who won't vote for Labour, even though they align more with them, just because they're like, oh, I don't like these people within that party. So as a result, you know, I really, you know, I'll stick with a party which I don't really like, but like, at least they're not as bad as those people, right? So, and, you know, it, it tends to also be a thing where people in Britain, like, these older parties kind of exist because they've always existed. You know, people vote because of how their father voted, how their grandfather voted, how their great-grandfather voted. And so, there's very few people in Britain who kind of like changed their mind and stuff under this kind of system. And it's estimated that about 20% of all voting is tactical, right? So people, you know, live in certain constituencies and they go, well, I like this person, I like this party. However, if I vote for them, then it's going to take votes off of a party, which I don't really like, but like it's kind of more aligned with me. And as a result, a party that I really don't like, they're going to end up winning. So because of that, I'll vote tactically for a party which I'm a bit like meh about rather than voting for what I actually want, which, you know, it's not great. Like if you go to the shops, you know, you buy what you want, right? You don't go all like, uh, I like oranges, but like, it, you know, if like I better like buy some apples otherwise bananas can be too popular. You know, it, I know this didn't work that way for kind of thing, but like within the marketplace, you vote for what you want and you, you know, and you vote and you show that you vote for it by paying for it. Whereas with a first past the post system, you end up kind of, no one really gets what they actually really want. So, and then also as well, there's a, there's a issue of people being disenfranchised. So if you're a conservative brokerteer living in inner city London, you're not getting represented, right? You're not, you know, your MP is probably like a Labour supporter and they're probably a Remainer, right? So your voice not getting heard. Similarly, if you're a socialist uh, who's uh, pro-Remain and you live in the countryside, chances are you're going to be represented by a conservative Brexiteer. So there's not really that much like representation for a lot of people. And as a result, a lot of people don't end up actually voting that election. And then even people who, you know, they live in a constituency which is safe, like there are certain constituencies where it's like 70% vote for one way or 80% for another way. Well, if that's the case, why even go out and vote, right? Because you can go out and vote, but at the end of the day, the national government is not going to reflect how you vote anyway. So the system that we currently have discourages people from actually going out to vote unless they happen to live within very uh, marginal seats and, you know, their vote will actually matter. However, with a proportional system, then a lot more people actually have a greater say. And, you know, you could see this in 2014 because people didn't matter how you voted, so you could actually vote for parties which you actually aligned with. And that's why, for instance, in 2014, UKIP end up doing so well. And then what's funny as well is that the year after this, you know, the, you had the 2015 uh, general election. And this ended up being one of the most disproportional uh, elections of all time, right? This was, you know, if you see that the, you know, the percentage of people uh, who voted for different parties and if you compare it to the number of seats people got, it's just completely out of whack. So the Conservatives end up getting 37% of the vote and end up having 51% of MPs. Labour 
got 30% of the vote and got 36% of MPs. UKIP got 13% of the vote and end up having one MP. Just one. Yeah, you know, there's something like 0.2% uh, of the overall uh, seats in Parliament end up going to UKIP, despite having uh, almost 13% of the votes. Yeah, and like, even like the Scottish Nationalist Party, you know, the, the SNP, they end up having 56 seats, yeah? Even though they end up having a smaller vote share than UKIP did, and end up having a smaller vote share than Lib Dems end up having as well. So, the first part of the post, it rewards geographic like uh, dominance right if you can hold down a certain region of the country then you end up having more seats but if your support is more uh, uh, evenly distributed around the country well then you know if you're not able to get a majority in any of those places then you don't get any representation in our parliament so as we can see obviously with the 2015 general election it really didn't matter how you voted in many places because you know you end up being uh, disenfranchised in many places but if you had a more proportional uh, system of voting this is what the results would be as you can see on screen there's many different uh, uh, voting systems that uh, we have here and as you can see the conservatives on the first past the post end up having 331 seats uh, but under a list a proportional uh, system yeah so as you so this is how they vote in the European Parliament they would have had just 242 uh, and then if they had AV, they would have 337. However, you could end up getting one seat in first past the post, but end up having 80 under a list proportional system, right? And then with AV, they end up getting one as well. There's also uh, STV, which is the single transferable vote, which is, we already have in Northern Ireland. And as you can see there, uh, UKIP would have got 54 uh, seats in, in that parliament. So depending on what kind of system you have, it kind of... It's, it has a different makeup, right? Now, a big argument that people have against proportional representation is that it makes it difficult for you to have strong government, yeah, in which one party uh, governs. Yeah, and like, this is quite a fair argument because as you can see from the numbers here, in order for, say, the Conservatives, yeah, to form a coalition, they had to align with UKIP and then, you know, it would have been very difficult to kind of go over the line. And then, you know, and then similarly, like with Labour, yeah, like kind of it'd have to negotiate with many, many different parties, uh, including probably the SNP. So then being in a coalition with the SNP would have been very unpopular for people south of the border because the SNP obviously wants Scottish independence. So it'd kind of be a poison chalice, yeah, to have them in your coalition because then they'd be pushing the whole time for Scottish independence, yeah, which obviously break up the union. However, for Australia, this system seems to be working relatively well because, you know, they've had it for almost a century, right? So in their federal elections in 2019, uh, this was the results for the major parties, right? So you had the Labour Party with 33.3% of the vote, and then you had the Liberal Party, which is probably the equivalent of our Conservative Party, yeah, and they had 28% of the vote. However, because the uh, Liberal Party end up being in a coalition with the National Party and one of the other parties as well, they end up having a, a Liberal National Coalition of 41.4%. So obviously 41.4% is larger than 333 And because uh, Australia has a kind of, you know, they have a similar uh, system to, to AV, not exact yet, but they have a very similar system where it's a runoff kind of thing. Um, and you know, the, the, the weaker parties are kind of eliminated until you end up just with like two main ones. And so in turn, uh, the result for that election end up being 51.5% for the Liberal National Coalition and 48.5% for the Labour Party. So people in Australia voted for what party they thought like, was best, right? So at the first stage, obviously, they said, this is my first preference. But because they were able to list uh, in preferences, yeah, like what they wanted, then when all these different uh, uh, things end up getting eliminated, you end up with the two major ones and you end up being like, okay, on the whole, we as the people prefer this party to govern us rather than the other one. Whereas obviously in the first past the post system, you have 37% of uh, the conservatives, yeah, and then they end up having 100% of the power, yeah, whereas under this system, you have it a bit more shared. So for instance, uh, UKIP getting 13% uh, of the vote in 2015, this combined with conservative 37%, would have, you know, it would have pretty much got a majority of seats already. And so if they had uh, formed a coalition, then we know that they definitely would have uh, had a Brexit referendum and more likely than not, obviously, it still would have gone to the same result. So in 2019, you had the European elections coming again 
And, you know, as I said, the uh, UKIP uh, had kind of gone down a very fringe path and so they didn't have much support. And so Nigel Farage, who was you know fed up with all this, yeah, you know, he left that party and then formed uh, the Brexit Party, yeah. And that Brexit Party, it came out of nowhere and completely topped the polls in in this European election, yeah. You know, and so as you can see, like the result of it, like this is like the map as it was. Yeah, you know, it's estimated that uh, the Brexit Party in that time would have got 414 seats in Parliament, yeah. So this is absolutely overwhelming, right? The Conservative Party was relegated to. Uh, I think one seat. So this kind of gives you a snapshot of what could have happened. And actually with even the Westminster polls, yeah, in that summer of 2019, yeah, you can see here uh, the Brexit party being the dominant party, yeah, like kind of, yeah, beating uh, Labour and, and the Conservatives and then also the Lib Dems sneaking in with like second place as well. So if you had a proportional uh, system, it's very likely that the two parties which currently exist at the moment probably wouldn't exist as they currently do because you know you have to understand the conservative party is made up of a coalition of different uh, interest groups as are the labor party and within those parties uh, sometimes the difference between them is greater than is with those people and people in other parties yeah. so the kind of centrist for instance within this party and within that party are more similar than they are with some of the people in their own party right and similarly uh, people who are more socially conservative you know you've got people who are socially conservative and brexiteer uh, who vote labor and then you've got uh, social liberals like kind of like uh, pro remainers uh, who vote uh, conservative so under this kind of system people could break off yeah people could break off into smaller parties that actually better represent them so you could have like a liberal conservative party and then you could have a kind of more um uh, like a working class that like kind of socially conservative uh, labor party right there's endless kind of possibilities of how things were turned out but i think that summer of 2019 kind of gave us a snapshot of what british politics could look like if we got rid of first past post and had a proportional representation